Hi, so in this video, I'm going to try and work through some um, exercises to do with um, extracting as much information as possible from CAD data with respect to machine control, setting out, and so on and so forth. Uh, we get a lot of users sending data that comes in similar fashions, usually from Civil 3D. So I'm going to start by importing that data. So here's that data there, and I'm just going to drag and drop it in. Enforce says um, what units was it drawn in and what scale do you want to uh, use for the text. I'm just going to accept these default settings. I'm not going to worry about bringing any uh, X references or layouts because for this particular job, it's all in one. Okay, so Enforce has read in that DWG. <clears throat> so the Enforce Project Manager is showing me that I've got one CAD model. We can have as many CAD models as you like. So you can think of the CAD model in Enforce as model space in AutoCAD and we can have as many CAD models in Enforce and as many uh, XYZ uh, and sort of triangulated models in Enforce as well. So uh, the Enforce database is capable of storing uh, an awful lot of data and you don't have to have multiple files uh, to store those bits and bobs in. It's all done in one project file uh, as you'll see later on. So as I scroll down the list of layers here, one thing that comes apparent immediately is that the layer count or rather the, sorry not the layer count, the element count on each layer is zero, okay? And as I come down, we eventually come to a layer which does actually have some information on it. And this layer is called XREF, okay? Now this seems to happen more often than not that people get sent a DWG where the actual data is stored as an external reference, but that external reference has been turned into one giant block. Because if I were to now view this data, Okay, you'll notice that there's an awful lot more than just four elements there. Okay, so immediately what that tells us is that uh, we've got blocks here. Uh, we call them symbols in Enforce, but fundamentally they're blocks in AutoCAD. And quite often they are blocks within blocks within blocks. Anybody who's dealt with this information before, this type of information, will obviously have had um, the data moved around, the coordinate system screwed about with, rotated so it looks nice on a piece of paper, and basically, you know, ultimately made as difficult as you possible to actually then go and actually make some sense of. <clears throat> in this situation, we've actually got um, data in the right coordinate system to begin with, so we've got at least that going for us. So my first port of call then is to extract the information, uh, and by that I mean explode the symbols, explode the blocks. So I'm going to go to symbols explode, and in rectangle mode, I'm just going to select everything and explode it, and then for says symbol exploded. Now, <clears throat> I've done this a few times with lots of different data sets, and generally there's at least one uh, one recurrence of a symbol within a symbol. So I'm just going to do that again. Okay, we've got some more data back. So I'm just going to zoom in now. Okay, uh, right-click to cancel that tool. And for should be highlighting objects as I hover over them. So you can see here we have that object there. That's been highlighted. It tells me it's on a level. Uh, it's on the layer level text. Finish floor level, that's being uh, given to us as well. However, if I hover over this object, that's not showing me anything, okay? That's because it also is still inside a block. So I'm just gonna double middle mouse button to zoom out. And then I'm gonna repeat. So I'll um, explode symbols and we'll just do that again. Enforce is beeping at me. Hmm. Why is that? So Enforce is beeping at me to say there are no more symbols to explode, which is odd. If I flick back to the project manager and come down, we've, we've started to get some objects now on some of these layers. Still, I'm still not seeing an awful lot of objects on many layers. And what you'll notice is that this layer here, XREF, is visible. So a, a visible layer is a bit like a locked layer in AutoCAD. It can't be uh, actioned on, it can only be viewed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to status, and make that active. I could have done that in the other view. I could have just gone straight to status and come down, but with that many layers, it's sometimes easier to do it in the other view. So having done that, I can go back to symbols, come down to explode, and hopefully this time, okay, there we go. So now, if I zoom in, 
Okay, so when I zoom in now, having exploded it a number of times, I can now see that we've got the cross or the symbol, sorry, on this layer level points or level symbol, sorry, and the annotation on an appropriate level on an appropriate layer, sorry, and the contours are also on a layer on their own now. If I were to go and click on a show here, which is a bit like typing list in AutoCAD, you can see that it's a polyline, but the level of it is zero. So that's not actually any use to us. Okay. Um, worst case scenario, we could use it and we'd have to obviously then set the height of that polyline manually, um, assuming we have the text to do it somewhere. Uh, but luckily in this situation, we at least have some levels and some text. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the project manager and under CAD create a new one. I'm just going to call this one OGL for original ground levels. <coughs> And then I'm going to flick back to here and I'm going to use this button here that says copy. And when I click on copy and click on an object, what Enforce will do is actually put that entire layer on the clipboard. So all I've now got to do is click in here and click paste and that level's gone in. I obviously now have to do the same for the text. So I'll hit click on the text, click on this and choose paste. Okay. So now I have a separate drawing, a separate CAD model, if you like, within Enforce with just that information on it. I can now right click that and then it's just a quick shortcut to actually creating a model. Just come down to Backlog Create. And what it's gonna do is this is gonna create me a normal model and it's gonna put the CAD data behind it. So that at the moment, the model has got no data in it. You can see there's no XYZ data in there at all, but it's put in the background, as we call it a backlog, the CAD information already. If I want to do that manually, I could just do that with Alt B. Another CAD, here it is. So you can have anything in the in the backcloths. So you can think of a backcloth essentially as an XREF in AutoCAD, but it's a little bit easier to use because you can just click, literally drag and drop things into it and move things from left to right to view or not view them. So I need to enforce now to create me the points. Okay, so it would be a hell of a job to do this manually. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out. I'm going to go to the points menu. I'm going to come down to generate from symbols. Okay. We know it's a symbol because we've already queried it. Uh, it wants a code. So Enforce is survey software. So we draw or other Enforce draws based on things code. The code table, which is fully customizable, essentially reads the code and draws all the CAD information for you automatically. You don't have to do a thing. So I'm going to use a predefined code called spot level. And it should just give me a spot across on the screen and a piece of height next to it, which is the text automatically rendered. Um, I'm just going to do check duplicates just on the off chance we've got some duplicate points in there. Press OK and in rectangle mode, just select the whole lot. OK. If I flick back now to the project manager, you can see here's each spot level. Here's the XYZ coordinates. Hmm. But obviously it's not 3D. So what should I do instead? So I'm going to do Control Z to undo. I'm going to repeat that command from symbols, and I'm going to choose from closest text. That way, we won't be using the assign height, which obviously is zero. We're going to be using a piece of text, which is hopefully close to the point, so that we don't go too far. <clears throat> okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say don't go, you know, obviously right across the the job to find a, a point. So let's put a distance there of uh, say a couple of meters. And that way it won't go too far when it tries to find a level. Start at one again. Press OK. Do the job again. And now when I look back at the project manager, here you can see that we've got heights. So I can now just go to the DTM menu, create a DTM. Can get rid of the backlog now. If I turn on the shading, there you go. So there's a nice quick surface. If I just go to the contours menu, change those settings. So I'll just have, I'll add this one major. And let's have that in blue. Every meter, that's fine, I suppose. And let's have a normal in dark gray. Let's have that every 0.25. So if I now just untick the shading, you'll see that. And if I untick the model, there you go. Okay. So there we go. That's given us the ground model back. Uh, I can check it in 3D as well if I want. 
pretty featureless as we look at it because it's fairly flat, but obviously I can switch that to height shaded as well. Turn the points on, turn the contours on. So there we have a, a very quick um, task indeed if you, if you didn't have to talk about it to get the ground model back. The next stage obviously then is to try and do something about the uh, roads and about the um, footprints of the houses and try and create some sort of outline of these houses and use that, use that outline and set it to the correct level so we can start thinking about some sort of machine control model. And that's what we will do next. To make life easier for myself, I'm going to try and transfer some of this data into a, into a clean uh, CAD model and that way I can explore things a bit more easily without having to worry about all the other layers that are in this project. So I'm going to go copy up here, which is a new tool in the latest version of 4.3. And what will happen is when I click on something, that entire layer is now put on the clipboard. I can create myself a new CAD model. I'm going to just call this one houses for argument's sake. Press OK. And I just right click in here and choose paste. And if I double click on that, there's all the houses uh, that's on that layer. Uh, I'm missing the finished floor levels though, so I'm going to quickly flip back to the other one. Uh, still in the copy command, so just going to save side I'll hit it again. Copy, flip back into the project, right click and choose paste. So having pasted that in, I can now double click on that. Okay, so we've got the finished floor levels in there now. Uh, but as you can see, we're missing some houses, so there's some houses uh, that are on another layer in this project. So let's flip back to the other CAD model and try and see about where they might be. So if I flick over to the side, I think this might be some of them over here. So if I hover over that, that was one point symbol on XREF, that's the one we've got already. What about these? That's something else entirely, that one. So let's copy that one. Copy that one, there we go. Flick back into here, and I'm just gonna hit paste. Yep, now hopefully those are all here. Good. So I'm gonna explode these now because these are all obviously each of those houses that's actually just one giant symbol. So what we're gonna do is gonna go to symbols, come down to explode, and then rectangle mode, rectangle everything. Okay. So if I now flick back to the project manager, so in the houses model, we've now got all of these layers. If I double click uh, on setting out, that just seems to be the outlines of some of these houses. Uh, if I go to come on it again and go to status, hit setting out and make that the current layer and press um, press invert and then off and keep the floors active. There we go. So we've got floor levels in every block now, although we do have an item there that we don't particularly need. All right, it's all good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to essentially um, generate points from CAD and I'm going to use the internal uh, height here to set a height for each of those um, slabs. Now in this way what I'm actually doing is creating a essentially outline of a slab um, but obviously that doesn't include any of the outline of the brickwork so we'll attempt the outline of the brickwork a different way. So I'm going to create myself a model. So I'm going to right click my houses, backcloth create, give it the same name and that's now automatically in there. I'm now gonna come down from the points menu to generate from lines. Okay, and I'm gonna say closest text. We'll say each of these um, slabs, we'll give it CE for concrete edge, which just happens to be a code I've got set up. And when I click closest text, a new option that we've added recently that says inside lines only means that it will actually use the text to generate the height of each polygon, but only if it's inside a feature. 
So it needs text inside these CAD polylines for this to work. So I'm going to press OK and then just select all of that. OK, now if I turn off the back cloth and zoom in. Sorry, I'll turn the back cloth back on because then we get the heights. And then if I hover over there, you can see 54.85. If I just query the point, go to coding, get a height, turn it on, say parallel leading the point, and then redraw, and drop the scale down. Okay, so 5485, 5485, 5525, yeah, okay. So that's done that job uh, everywhere it can do. Here we've obviously got no height because there was no text inside it. So I'm just gonna go lines, delete, click that, and that'll disappear. Otherwise, hopefully everything's been given the right height. So what we can do now is obviously we can create a DTM, we can group this up uh, and go on from there. But as I said before, this doesn't give us the outline of the brickwork, which we might need. Uh, if we're going to talking about machine control, this will just give us the outline of the slabs. There's also a few places where some of these um, slabs have got two levels. That's all right there. Um, but here we have another one here where we've actually got two levels. So you obviously need to split the string and then um, set the heights this side to be that height, which is obviously quite easy because you can just use the lines menu, come down to heights, and then you can choose raise or set, whatever you want to do. So you can set it to where it needs height needs to be. I'm going to assume everything is, is okay for the time being. You're going to have some points over here in some places that don't have a height. So to quickly sort those out, I'm just going to right click in the spreadsheet view. So if I use the select tool, if I scroll down, sorry, just to check what I've got here. So scroll down, you can see in places I've got no height at all. So it's got basically null height. It's essentially 2D. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click here and there's a height. Uh, so there's a select tool called select null and I hit delete and that will then sort those out. So if I hit F5 to redraw, you can see it disappears. Obviously got the back cloth still there. All right. So I have all of these uh, CE points, see the concrete edge, obviously. I have a few extraneous points for whatever reason. I'll just go points. Delete, delete that one. Okay, so I've got my all got all my points here. I'm gonna go DTM, I'm gonna go create normal. Okay, so I've got uh, a load of uh, points here. Now, um, if I just wanna work out volumes, obviously I could just um, do, do a, a volume now to the surface. Um, so one quick way of doing that would be to go to groups. Let's just add, so add a group in. And I'm going to call this one bases. And I'm going to use a fill style that I've already got set up called concrete. Um, and we'll give it a group depth of say 0.25 for argument's sake. Okay, I need to group up all these triangles that are inside these uh, houses. So I'm just going to go add by prefix, put CE in there. And it selects all those houses. So having used the grouping tool to group all the CE points, you can see there's a few places that still haven't worked. Um, that's because these strings are not closed for whatever reason. So there's a, probably a mixture of two strings here because obviously some of them I said earlier had two heights. So instead, uh, I'm just going to go to the groups and we're just going to go um, feature one side. Click that, click that, click that, click that. That gets that one done. Right, so you can see here I've got a problem. This line hasn't been forced because something else is forcing elsewhere, which is stopping us to do it, which is stopping it being forced. Uh, in fact, when you're actually um, modeling this number of points, it's usually a good idea to actually make sure that you have points at a more regular interval than just at the just in the corners. So I'm going to start again. So I'm going to delete all the triangles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to densify all the strings. And that way I won't have to worry about uh, any issues with forcing and it'll also give us neater triangles at the end of the day anyway. So under the lines menu, I'm going to come down to densify. I'm just going to choose all and we'll say I want points at least two meter centers, linearly interpolated. 
Okay, so now I have points, much more regular intervals around the edges. Just delete that point there. So I'll now create the DTM as I did before. Now I can go group prefix CE. Strike that, strike that. Oh, um. Okay, so I've got everything grouped properly now. So I can go to the DTM menu, come down to delete, and choose ungrouped. Everything is now got a group. And I could now do a volume, or I can output that for machine control. Um, just by going to view and export XML or output to AutoCAD. Uh, no problems at all. Um, if I wanted to, I could also um, batter these so that I could create some extents of the actual dig. Um, but if I just do a quick volume, I'll go to the DTM menu for that, go up to prism volumes, take into account the group depths. Um, now I've got to swap cut and fill because otherwise my sense of cut and fill around the wrong way. Um, Enforce is always calculating the volume um, to essentially can turn what you have on your screen now into what you're asking it to project to. So obviously I don't want to turn these into the OGL, I want to do the reverse. So we'll just um, make sure swap cut and fill is ticked. Uh, press OK. Choose the OGL model. Press OK. And there we go. So our bases are going to require that amount of cut and that amount of fill, assuming we have quarter of a meter depth of um, slab, okay? If for whatever reason it was a deeper slab, I do just to prove that, is copy that, and then just go to the group settings, and change that to 0.5, Okay, that, and then run the volume again. Model group depth, so I take the depths into account in this model. So group is now 0.5, but if I paste in there the old one, you can see that we are now obviously cutting more than we were cutting before. If I wanna make these volumes a bit prettier, I can uh, export these to Excel, obviously. So I'm just going to delete my uh, other answer there. Hit export, which will send it out to Excel. Yes, I want to create the spreadsheet and view it. Okay, so if I select all of those, there you go. And obviously the report is entirely customizable as to what colors we use and all that kind of stuff. So. What about another what if? What if we uh, wanted to actually calculate the volume of the excavation, including the batter? So let's do that. So I'm going to come back to here, new normal, sorry, come back to models, and choose new copy, and I will copy the houses model, and we'll just call this one digs for whatever bird, for one of a better word. Okay. Okay, in this model, I'm going to delete the DTM. Delete all. Okay, and now if I assume our excavation depth is half a meter, and then I'm going to come battering up from that to the DTM. So under digs, I'm actually going to drop all those slabs. So if I come down to height, offset, and choose minus 0.5, now all of those strings have actually been lowered by half a meter. Okay. What I'm going to do now is use the list and I'm going to just invert the list so that basically all the points are tagged. And I'm going to go to the design menu, design tab, sorry. Now I come, so I've got to change my pick mode to list so that it uses the points that are in the list. And under batter all, it will say, are you sure you want to use all the points? You can say yes. And I'm going to say up and down for argument's sake at one in three for both of them to a reference surface, which is the OGL. My, I haven't put any top soil strip on anything yet. And we want to go outside the polygon, yeah? So we need to make sure we go outside. So hence we need closed polygons for this to work. Uh, use the TB code. And yeah, so we've got the OGL all the way. That's the code. Not worry about the point number. Up and down, press OK. 
Okay, so now if I clear the list and zoom in, you can see that each string has now been battered. So I put that into 3D. Let's, have, let's see how that looks. So some are already above, some are already below. Some are overlapping, obviously, so you need to sort that out. But obviously now we could create a grand model of that and quantify that excavation as well. So both of these types of models I've created so far are basically dealing with the slab or the excavation of a slab. What about if we um, don't want to just excavate a full slab? What if we actually just want to only excavate where the lines of the walls are? Okay, so instead of using the, um, the CAD drawing that I've got here, I'm going to use a PDF. So someone's been kind enough to uh, give us a PDF uh, drawing of one of these houses. This one's called Plied. Uh, and what we can do is we can actually import that PDF and use that to give us the outline of all the block work or the excavations that we need. Uh, and then we can move on from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag that in to the CAD section. Okay, previews it here. So I'm just gonna say, yes, that's great. Load the CAD in, uh, everything is fine as it is. Okay, so now I have this outline of the CAD data. And what I need to do is check the scale and make sure, uh, check the scale and obviously then rescale it accordingly. So if I use this distance tool here, set to end, and if I go from here, and we should be looking at 11.465 obviously, and click on here, so that's 229.3. So if I just pop up a calculator, 229.3 divided by 11.465, exactly 20, okay? So one over that gives us our scale factor. Okay, so I'm now gonna go to the scale and put one over, not point, sorry, one over 20, which is 0 0.05 in there. Go to edit and we shall come down to more press enter so the scale sees it. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out so I see everything. And then we're gonna, so hit scale, it says indicate center or indicate origin of um, scaling. So I'm gonna click there and then rectangle mode, do that. Okay, so now when I zoom in, uh, I can now hopefully check that distance is correct. So I go home, distance from there. I'm looking for 11.465, which is what we've got. Right, okay, so now, having done that, I need to start um, trying to establish the center line of the block work. And also, I'm also gonna take out the extent of the um, foundation. So to do that, I'm gonna create myself a new layer. A new layer, and I'll just call this one Call this layer setting out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start moving information onto that layer that I need. So I go to attributes, I'm gonna use set layer. Then I'm gonna move over the information that I need, that I wanna keep onto that layer. So, all we have to do now is just pick the objects that you want to, that you want to use. Um, and I'll just keep clicking until I have what I want. Okay, so I'm now going to just turn all the other layers off and just see what I'm left with to make sure I haven't missed anything. So I'm going to select that layer there and press invert and then off. So that should now, yeah, okay, so that gives me everything I need there. I know that the um, slab work here is uh, a certain distance across. Now I need to make sure in a minute when I place this down, uh, I'm going to basically turn this into a block and repeat it. I'm going to um, lock it onto the right objects. So if I just turn all the objects back on, okay, so that line there, this one here, that's the 11.465. So I need to make sure I bring that one through as well. So I'm just going to manually draw uh, 
in a different color so I can tell it apart from everything else. So let's call this one green. I'm going to go to aligns. I'm going to go to a single segment and in uh, intersection mode, draw from there to the other end because I can always use that to help me place it later because the uh, data that I'm working on, I'm pretty sure if I flick back into the model and come back to houses, find one of those Clyde houses, which is here, and go distance, set that to end, from there to there. Yeah. So that 11.465 is that distance there. So if I'm going to use these as a template to drop down the actual line work of the brickwork and the excavation, um, I need to make sure I've got that original line work in the template. So now what I need to do is I need to find the center line of the brickwork. So I'll just turn all those layers off again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a different color, so uh, blue, and I'm going to use the tool here under the lines menu, create center. And you basically just click the two lines and it will then give you a center line. All right, so now I'm going to have to do that for all the block work here so I can end up with my center line. Okay, so I've hopefully now got uh, blue center lines down, running down the middle of, of most of the uh, walls that I need. So my next stage is essentially to turn all the other layers off, uh, turn the main layers off and actually now delete out what I don't need to get back and then extend and join. Okay, so if I'm gonna um, start doing that, I'm gonna go back to the lines menu. Let's go to join. So we join that to there. And then I need to obviously extend that up to there. So I go extend to reference, click that to there. A lot of this other work's gonna be, the line work's gonna be deleted in a minute. Uh, that needs to be extended to there. Okay, now I can start deleting some of the other uh, line work that I don't need. Uh, get rid of these wall lines. So with all my line work created, all that remains to do is now to turn this into a series of points that I can then drop down as a block. Okay, so I need to create my model. And as we saw, this is the Clyde house. So I see ID and there we go. So I'm going to now go to points and generate from lines. I'm just going to use the code CL for center line. No heighted for the time being. More about heights another time. Press OK and in rectangle mode, select everything. OK. So I'm going to just turn the back cloth off now using that one. Change my scale so it's a bit more. Okay, so everything's coded CL, which is not what I want for the time being. Uh, I want these ones to be concrete edges. So I'm just going to go to lines and come down to recode. And I'll call that one CE1. And this internal one here, CE2. Make them all CE2. Okay, so now I've separated my um, center lines for my excavations from the, the sides of the um, foundation. Now, these have been kept in there because these are my anchor points, which I'm going to use in a second. So to start creating this point block, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert the list because it uses the points that are in the list. So I'm going to go list invert. And I'll be careful now because I don't want this line getting in. So I'm going to go remove feature and click there. I'm going to, just going to use that to create the anchor points. So then I click to block and it says indicate the origin points. Now the, I can use now those points. I'm just set that to point and say, right, that's my origin point and this is my handle point. What's new coordinate? So what's the name for the block? So I'll call this one Clyde. Okay. 
So now under coordinates, we have one called Clyde with no height, but there it is ready and waiting. Choose 100, there you go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm now gonna create myself a new model. I'm gonna call this one machine control. Back cloth it with the CAD model houses. Okay, now I'm gonna find a Clyde. Here's one here. All right, now I'm gonna come down to the points menu, points tab, place two points. So I'm gonna place that template, okay, and using the indicated text option. So I can basically indicate the um, text in the middle of it to give it me the height. Using two points, so lock mode, I shall set to end, so, and come out of vertical axis lock, obviously, down to there. And then it wants me to click the text, so that text there. Let's drop the scale down again. Okay, then you just keep going. So you find another Clyde, there's one there, and, and, now obviously here you're gonna have a problem because they've got two different heights, so you're gonna to have to set some heights again afterwards. But if I just choose that one, that sets that one. Okay, choose this slide here, so from there to there, and then click that text. There you go. So it's literally just an exercise in dropping them down on top of where they need to go, and then you'll have all the center lines you like, um, and obviously you can then export this to any kind of uh, machine control file as uh, land XML, DWG, DXF, CSV, whatever you like. Okay, so we've shown how to generate points from the outside and parallel them in, create models and so on and so forth for volumes. And now we've done the same for um, creating a template. Okay, so that template could be dropped down. You can create a library of templates Okay, these can be exported to CSV, copied and pasted between projects. So once you've done it once, they can be used again and again and again and again and again. You just have to drop them down where they're needed uh, using the levels that are set in the drawing. Quick point I wanted to make a mention on um, uh, these models here where I've got the outline of the uh, excavation, the, the foundations and also the center line. Uh, let's say that we actually needed to quantify the excavation uh, more exactly shall we say and rather than just assume one overall dig for everything we actually try and split up so we actually don't have um, the area in here included in the volume so one way of doing that would be to say create the dtm so obviously i haven't got all the other um, houses in here modeled but the uh, the process is still valid so i've got my dtm here obviously it's going off and doing funny things elsewhere um, but if i go to groups group settings and add a group and we'll just call this one foundations and I will give that uh, concrete fill style I'm not worrying about the group depth for now uh, and then what I can do is I can uh, add by prefix so if I was to say CE everything concrete is added okay but if you remember these internal um, strings are actually called CE2. So if I do remove by prefix and put in CE2, you get that effect, okay? And that will do it everywhere, okay? So you can do this for all your bases and then you can start using group depths and you'll get a much more accurate quantity of what you're excavating or obviously volume of material that you're gonna put in there depending on how you wanna do a volume. So I just wanted to show you that you can use groups adding by string and removing by string to essentially do the entire job in, in one hit. Now, the final part of this video, I'm gonna work on the road, okay? So this road is particularly difficult. Okay, so one of the problems we see very regularly is the alignment for the center of the roads is completely independent of the height annotation and the crosses uh, that indicate where the height changes occur. So whoever drew this, 
why they did it, who knows, but essentially, yes, they've annotated the changes of level and where that happens, but it's not part of the original string. So that when we use that string, there's no indication of where the heights are. So we built a new tool within Enforce to try and insert these height change points back into the features or back into these center lines, these polylines, so that we can generate points from closest text then, and um, the node on the line will then be close enough to the text to be used. So if I use this tool here, so I'm going to cut this time so I can tell what I'm moving. So click that and then I'm going to go to my new roads model, my new roads project, my new roads CAD drawing, sorry. Paste that in, flip back to the CAD and we'll cop cut that one now. Paste that in and do the same for the points which are indicating where these things actually change. Now there's obviously one under there. So you've got one called feature point still left. Um, so I'll just do that twice just in case there's multiple layers here. Chain lines and cut it again. Paste, okay, so now if I look at roads, here we go. So we've got all the roads now on their own and I've got this text now everywhere I need a, a point on the line. So the tool I need to use under the under the lines menu, because we're still in CAD, we're going to basically go to Apex Assert Points. So all you need to do is having done that, just click on a line. And now it will insert a node if you can see there's now a, a block appearing, a little yellow block where that node is. So you just need to click on each line, making sure you don't miss any out. Okay, so now I should be able to generate points from closest text and have myself some sort of uh, decent alignment. So we're gonna go create a cloth, give the name roads. And I'm just going to go to points. We're going to come down to generate from lines using the closest text. Give it a maximum search distance of say about say five meters, so it doesn't go too far on the off chance. Choose RD for road. Press OK. And in rectangle mode, select everything. If I now turn the back cloth off. You can see that we now have lots of points with heights on it that we wouldn't have otherwise had. Okay, so if I zoom in on these points now, you can see we've got all the heights in the right places. If I turn the back cloth back on, there you go. Um, if I just change the height, change the color of those points so they stand out a bit easier, more easily. Okay. So everything now got the right height, and we can obviously now parallel off that and do whatever we need to do, create graded strings and whatnot. But fundamentally, that saved us hours of gluing the line work back together again, because um, there were no points on the strings. And that will conclude our little tutorial. Thank you very much for listening.